Not too often do swamp people make one of the largest cities of their time, but underneath the capital of Mexico is one of these settlements that grew to be one of the largest cities in the world at the time. But calling them swamp people isn't very accurate, it's more like lake people, but swamp people sounds funnier. The city they built held around 200,000 people, but no matter how large they were able to grow, warfare, disease, and colonization would just bring them crashing down. Lying under Mexico City is the city of Tenochtitlan. It was founded by the Aztecs, and in just 200 years they managed to take a small settlement built on the Lake Texacoco and they created one of the largest cities when Europe was just exiting the Middle Ages. And the city thrived until the Spaniards couldn't mind their own business anymore and they decided they had to have it. But we're going to get more into that later. But first it's time for that new game show. Let's get my name and a GIF. And what do you have to do to win today's GIF? Well you simply have to take and tell me what this is. You've probably seen it before, but do you actually know what it's called? The first one to name it correctly in the comments gets their name in the next poorly created YouTube video. We're uncertain where the people that called themselves the Aztecs came from, but we do have some clues. From their traditions and stories that they had, we think Think that they came from the northern Mexico plateau sometime around the 12th century CE and they started off as hunter-gatherers and it's thought that their movement south may have helped lead to the fall of the Toltec but we've covered that in a video before and you can check it out somewhere on screen right now but I will give a quick history of the Toltec they much like the Aztecs only lasted for a very short amount of time from the 10th century to the 12th century CE it was sometime around 900 CE that they laid waste to the city of Tawatiwakan and this ushered in a new era of militarism in Mesoamerica and let me tell you it is something that the Aztecs would take and just run with it. After the fall of Tula, the Toltec's capital, the Aztecs were looking for a new home and they decided they were going to settle next to the ruins. And why they were there, they were going to work on themselves. They put skill points into things like farming and their tech tree. But the Aztecs had a problem. This home wasn't a home. But their god, Hitzuapachli, had an answer for them. Well, you just need to leave and go find a new home. But how does one find a new home? Like some kind of sick, twisted real estate agent, he told them they needed to find an eagle holding a serpent in its beak sitting on an opala cactus. And this is probably something you've seen before on the Mexican flag. So they set out looking for their new home, and around 1325 they found it in the swampy area on an island in Lake Texacoco. On the island, they started to construct temples and houses, and I would like to think that in one of the houses there was a sign that said there's just me and my swamp. The city was laid out in a grid pattern because that's the best way to lay a city out and everybody knows it. It was built on the western shore of the lake, and there were three causeways that led from the island to the mainland. And for people that were walking to cross the causeways, there were removable bridges, and they used canoes for most everything they did, from transporting people to transporting goods. And as I said before, they decided they were going to live on an island, but they also decided they were going to create more islands because living on land is nice, but why not take and make your own land? They only started off with two islands, but they said they could do better. And by the time it was all said and done, they had created artificial islands that stretched around 13 square kilometers. And cutting through the city were four main canals, each leading in a cardinal direction. And between these canals were other canals that linked them together. The streets and the canals were narrow, but this made for what was said to be a spectacular looking city. And as you made your way through the city, the sun was said to have bounced off white plastered monuments that were all throughout the city, making that much more spectacular. The city itself was constructed around the ceremonial precinct. It was a walled off area where the rulers lived. Living alongside the rulers in these residential areas were the nobles and other officials. Their houses weren't as grand as the rulers' houses were, but they were laid out much the same way. The residential areas also had high-end markets where they could buy things like jade, chocolate, and vanilla. And what did one do for fun? Well, you went to a dance house or an aviary. There were also more mundane buildings in the residential areas area, like judicial chambers, the treasury, and even storehouses. But as everybody knows, a city doesn't just function on the rich. It takes other people to make things actually happen. And they were kind enough to let the normal people live alongside them, because they needed them to run things like the workshops, where they made metal and obsidian tools. The people lived in small houses made of adobe brick and reeds. But it's also been argued that these might have just been the gardens for the rich. And according to one of the colonizers, the sacred precinct the city was built around had 78 different structures in it. And we're not going to cover all these buildings, because I don't want to, and that's not very ADHD friendly. So we're just going to talk about the temple mayor. And the Aztecs called this temple Huetze Teletzi. It was located in the center of the sacred precinct and had two sets of stairs that rose 60 meters in height. At the top was a platform that held two temples. The one on the north was dedicated to the god Talatec. And this temple also lined up with the summer solstice, which marked the beginning of the wet season. And the second temple was dedicated to the god Huitzilopochtli. And this temple lined up with the winter solstice, which meant it was time for the Aztecs' favorite time of the year, war. They made sacrifices in front of each temple to honor and feed the god. And these sacrifices were not for the faint of heart. The victim would first have their heart ripped out, and then their body was skinned. And if that wasn't disgracing enough, they would then chop off the head and dismember the body. And then the victim would have one last humiliation. They were chucked down the stairs. And fresh water is something that every city needs. So they built aqueducts from nearby springs to bring fresh water to the city. And you're probably asking, well, why didn't they just scoop a cup up out of the water there? Well, Lake Texacoco is actually a saltwater lake. And you can imagine living on a lake would actually make farming just a little bit difficult, seeing as how there's no land for 
you to farm on. But they devised an ingenious way to actually solve this problem. They used a method called Chinampa, and this is actually a method that's still used to this day. It's just taking those artificial lands that have a little bit of flooding and using those for farming. The Chinampas all had about the same dimensions, 30 meters by two and a half meters. They created the boundaries for the Chinampa by driving stakes into the corners and then building a fence between that. And I think that they did this so that the fish didn't get any ideas. I mean, fish play dumb, but they will stab you at the first chance they get. And the fences they created were really simple. It was just weaved together branches. And over time, mud and plants would strengthen the fences against the fish. And then for their tower defense, they put willow trees every so often. And between each plot for farming, there were canals. This made it easy for them to take and tend to the crops. And the best part was they could just take the food that they harvested. Anything that was left behind could just be left there because it would break down and it would become fertilizer for the next set of plants. And what did they grow? Well, maize is the obvious one, but that wasn't everything because they also grew tomatoes, potatoes, papaya, peanuts, other fruits and vegetables. And because working farms is hard work, afterwards you wanted to treat yourself to something. They created a drink that was called Akle. But unlike many frat houses, they knew how to drink in moderation. And this was because being drunk was actually seen as a crime. It carried all sorts of punishments with it, but the most severe was death. And they would wash it all down with a steaming cup of hot cocoa. It wasn't actually sweet. It was actually more bitter, but they would sweeten it up by putting either honey, vanilla, or even maize into it. And a fun fact about the cocoa bean, it was actually so prized that it was used as a currency. And this led to counterfeit cocoa beans. And you already know that the Aztec civilization came crashing down when the Spanish were no longer content with just oppressing their people at home. By the start of the 16th century, the Spanish had grown tired of exploiting the Caribbean. They wanted new areas to exploit. So they turned their grubby little hands to the mainland. In 1519, Cortez took a small group of 450 men to the mainland. When he landed, they started searching for gold and they quickly made their way to the Aztec capital. And when the Spanish arrived, Montezuma II actually welcomed them in with open arms. But much like many political leaders today, Cortez was insecure about the size of his <laughs> army when it was compared to the number of Aztecs. So he did what any rational man would do and he kidnapped Montezuma II, forcing him to become nothing more than really a figurehead. And he was banking on the fact that as long as he had their ruler captive, that the people wouldn't attack him. But before Cortez could see his conquest through, he had to go deal with an arrest party. He had received word that he was to be arrested on site because he had overstepped the bounds of his orders. So he left a small group of men behind in the city while he went off to deal with the arrest party. But the guy he left behind in charge may not have been up to the job. Pedro de Lovardo, during a religious ceremony, had hundreds of the Aztec nobles slaughtered. And in turn, the Aztecs decided that they were done. They attacked the Spaniards and they killed many of the men that were left behind. Cortez soon arrived not too long afterwards after dealing with his arrest party. And he immediately ordered Montezuma to get his people under control. And this is where history gets a little messy because Montezuma's death has two different stories to it. The Spanish claimed that Montezuma, after trying to plead with his people, was pelted with stones and arrows and died three days later. But the Aztecs had a different story. They claimed that the Spanish actually killed Montezuma. But either way, the story has the same end. Cortez and his men tried to sneak out of the city in the dead of the night, but the Aztecs were onto them. They attacked them, killing many of the men. But Cortez was not to be deterred. He had one major help when it came to conquering the Aztecs. The Aztecs hadn't made many friends due to their warlike nature. They demanded a steady stream of tribute from those that they had conquered, and the tribute came in the form of human sacrifices. The groups that the Aztecs conquered didn't really care for this form of tribute, so they were more than happy to help Cortez. Cortez came back with an army of 800 men and tens of thousands of natives to lay siege to the city. With all these new men, he was able to post them around the lake. But he didn't stop there, because he had his men break down the ships and carry them across land, reconstruct them, and put them into the lake. He used the cannons on his ships to fire on the city, and all the time was cutting off fresh water and food from getting into the city. The siege lasted for 93 days, attacking the city in hopes that the Aztecs would just give up. And eventually the tactic worked. They broke through the city walls and once inside, they slaughtered anybody that was there. And on the 13th of August, 1521, Cortes declared the city to be his. After the fall of the city, it would only take the Spanish three years to finish conquering Mesoamerica. But the Spanish didn't do it alone. They brought diseases along with them like smallpox. The native people stood no chance against this and the rest is history. Archaeology in the area began at the 20th century and it helped us shed more light on areas like the sacred precinct, which we found was actually built on earlier structures. The temples that were constructed in this area were actually added onto and rebuilt many times over the years. But when the city fell, the Spanish took anything of value, but they did leave behind some things like works of art. And one of the things they left behind was this. And remember, if you can name it, you actually get your name in the next video. I just didn't want you to forget. Excavations in the city are still ongoing to this day. And as with much archeology span that we do, we have to contend with the modern cities. And Mexico City is no different. But in 1985, an earthquake hit the city. This meant that as the cleanup process went on, so did archeology. span The temple mayor was found in 1978 when they were laying electrical cables. And as Mexico City continues to grow, we keep finding new hints about who the Aztec were and about their final days. I wanna thank you all for watching and I wanna thank the people right here, the crew over at Patreon. Their support means the world to me. And if you would like to help 
support the channel, then head over to Patreon today and become a member for as little as two Canadian dollars a month. You can also sign up for free to stay up to date on what I'm doing over on Patreon. Over there I make exclusive content that you can't see anywhere else, so head over to Patreon and sign up today.